The other day, Donald Trump was at one of his press briefings and he was listening to the undersecretary talk about various studies they've done in disinfecting coronavirus on various surfaces in human saliva. And he asked a question about whether or not you could use this disinfectant, maybe inject it or get it inside, inside the body somehow. Later, he was asked, you're not suggesting you would, in, you know, inject bleach or uh, alcohol. And Trump said, no, it wouldn't be. Now, the media has run wild with this, and I did a segment on this earlier in the morning. I want to say a few things. I got to admit, I'm obsessed with this because I started doing a deep dive. A bunch of Trump supporters sent me some articles, and they're actually really good defenses of what Trump was saying. Apparently, Trump was informed about something. This, this is how it goes. Some, there will be something in the press Trump will see. And then later on, he'll say, I, I, I'm curious about this. And the media will attack him for it, ignoring the greater context. I still think Donald Trump asked a silly question. I do. But I absolutely had to show the rebuttal from Trump supporters because it's a fair point. And I felt like lacking this context in my previous segment, I, you know, what am I going to do? I, I can't take the video down. I, I think I made I made a, 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 a appropriate points about Joe Biden and media double standards. And I do think Trump's question was a bit silly, but here's what I want to do. Let me show you this story that people are sharing. It's actually a good point about getting <laughs> disinfectants in the body. I want to show you that Donald Trump's context was still about bleach, but he did walk it back. And I think they are blowing this way out of proportion as they normally do. I feel as though I made a mistake. You see, like I said, I didn't want to believe the story about Trump saying we should inject this stuff. And while I do think Trump made silly questions, it's, it's not really that big of a story. And the media will latch on anything, assume the worst about Trump. And it's kind of my point still stands from the earlier segment. But you really got to see these things because it's actually quite fascinating. But what I really want to get to is this story. So remember that guy who ate the fish tank anti-parasitic agent? We've got numerous stories now about how his wife had apparently hit, hit, uh, hit him in the past, was giving him, you know, vitamin cocktails. The insinuation from many people is that this woman who was a Democratic donor and lifelong Democrat who called Trump like the psycho in chief or something, wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, kill her husband. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Now, I'm not going to make that insinuation. I'm just letting you know that's what people are trying to push. But the Washington Free Beacon wrote a story saying the dude who ingested this was an intelligent engineer. Why would he just eat this? And the points they make are that he just trusted what his wife had given him. And they're entertaining the possibility that the wife was really dumb or was trying to cause him harm. I do think everyone is desperate to defend the president. And I honestly just can't stand it anymore. But I got I got to say, man, I'm, I'm truly fascinated by this story about uh, nebulized hydrogen peroxide, as well as something called ultraviolet uh, blood infusion or something like this. There's a couple different light treatments. Apparently, Trump was actually asking a good question. So I, I kind of dragged the president pretty hard saying they're dumb questions. Now I feel kind of bad because let's be honest. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I mean, there are stupid questions, but if Trump wants to ask a medical expert a question about potential disinfectants and it's dumb, well, at least he's asking and not asserting. The headlines we're seeing on Reddit in the media are completely fabricated. When I went to Reddit, see, this is what I got obsessed with this. I did this segment already. I don't need to talk about it. But then I go to Reddit and they're like, Donald Trump suggests injecting bleach. He never did. He asked a question about it. More importantly, there are legitimate questions around treatments going back earlier this month. <clears throat> we'll read through this story a little bit. I think I already made the point about it, but we still have in the New York Times them trying to bring this up, saying Trump, you know, people try to put the responsibility on him. Dude, the lady, the lady gave her husband packs of some crazy tablet and he just ate it. So you can assume what you want, but check this out. Let me show you the remarks first. And then I want to show you there's, there's actually light treatments. They, there's an article someone sent me, the cure that time forgot. It's really fascinating. Apparently back in the day, they would actually use UV light because uh, what I was reading is that viruses and bacteria will absorb more of the, photo, uh, the, the a potential photo energy or whatever it is than human cells. And when human cells get damaged because the UV damages DNA, humans can repair their own DNA. So it's like, the, the bacteria and the viruses get hurt worse than the human does. It sounds similar to how chemotherapy would work. Now, listen, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying any of this stuff will work. 
I'm just saying if I can go to the NIH.gov and see numerous stories published about using light under the skin to treat viral infections or other ailments, I'm kind of like, Trump's question wasn't stupid. I'm not saying it's legit. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying he asked a question. But let me show you this first. The context is important. This is what the, so this is the undersecretary. Uh, he's got this huge speech. This is under, uh, undersecretary Brian. He's giving the speech about their studies and he brings up, you know, how they can test in saliva. And then he, he basically says uh, something to the effect of disinfectants saying, we're also testing disinfe- disinfectants readily available. We've tested bleach. We've tested isopropyl alcohol on the virus, specifically in saliva or in respiratory fluids. And I can tell you that bleach will kill the virus in five minutes. Isopropyl alcohol will kill the virus in 30 seconds. And that's with no manipulation, no rubbing, just spraying it on and letting it go. You rub it and it goes away even faster. We're also looking at other disinfectants, specifically looking at the COVID-19 virus in saliva. This is not the end of our work. As we continue to characterize the virus and integrate our findings into practical applications to mitigate exposure and transmission, I would like to thank the president and thank the vice president for their ongoing support and leadership to the department for their work in addressing this pandemic. I would also like to thank the scientists, not only in s and but the NBACC, but, do, uh, but to the larger sci- scientific and R&D community. Thank you very much. Trump that then steps up and says, so I asked Bill a question that probably some of you are thinking if you're totally into that world, which I find to be very interesting. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, which you can do either through the skin or in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. It sounds interesting. We'll get to the right folks who could. Trump asked a question that apparently had been insinuated by the undersecretary already. Now, when I looked at this, my question was, I think it sounds silly. I'm not a doctor, but you know what? This should be proof to y'all that I have a predisposition against the president when he says stuff like this, because then sure enough, I should have checked my own bias and realized, well, you got to Google search this because I'll eat this one. While I'm not saying Trump is entirely correct, I think it's fair to point out as he's asking a simple question that was brought up to him by the undersecretary who said he's going to test it. Then we have this story, ultraviolet blood irradiation. Is it time to remember the cure that time forgot? In fact, there are many people who are into alter- alternative medicine. What they do is they put a UV catheter under your skin. Apparently, some of these have been approved. It's not a mainstream treatment. I am not saying it is approved or it is good, but it does exist in numerous bits of literature. In which case, if I saw this from NIH.gov, which mind you is published by the authors to this, I don't think they, they check all, the, all, all of these uh, publications, and they mention ultraviolet blood irradiation was extensively used in the 40s and 50s to treat many d- diseases, including septicemia, pneumonia, tuberculo- tuberculosis, arthritis, asthma, and even poliomyelitis. If something was used to treat pneumonia back in the day, it's entirely possible it's completely ineffective. But Trump asking about it, I don't think is out of the question. We're talking about a 1940s and 50s treatment that fell out of use because of antibiotics, according to this publication. It could be wrong. I don't want to go back in time and look at stupid treatments. They used to drink lead and mercury or they used to, yeah, and other dumb stuff. But if it's true, just reading this on the surface, I think it warrants a question. And if someone is telling Trump this and then he asks the question, that is not stupid. But let's be fair, okay? I feel, I, I, I gotta admit, I don't like doing like re-segments, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta address this. Trump then says, right, And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets in the lungs and it does a tremendous number on the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that so that you're going to have uh, so, so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's pretty powerful. Steve, please. Then they go on to ask other questions. But let, let me do this. Someone then asks uh, a question. Who's who's asking? Okay. He says, I, uh, but I just, can I ask about the president mentioned the idea of cleaners like bleach and isopropyl alcohol you mentioned. There's no scenario that that could be injected into a person. Is there? I mean, undersecretary says, no, 
I'm here to talk about the findings that we had in the study. We won't do that within the lab and our lab. So, and then the president in, uh, interjects. It wouldn't be through injection. We're talking about through almost a cleaning, a sterilization of an area. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work, but it certainly has a big effect if it's on a stationary object. The president is talking about sterilizing objects, and we've already heard numerous reports that they have aerosolized disinfectants, notably hydrogen peroxide, for disinfecting N95 masks. I don't know if they're still doing that. That's just something I, I pulled up when I started digging into this. I should have done all this digging before, but I am, I am but an imper imperfect person. Donald Trump asked a question about injecting disinfectants after the undersecretary mentioned bleach and aspirable alcohol. You could then make the assumption that Donald Trump was thinking you could inject bleach or isopropyl alcohol. It's also possible he was just thinking disinfectant in general. Of course, the media took it to the worst possible conclusion. Now, Trump supporters have stepped up with this article. It was, it was published by MSN.com. They are considered credible by NewsGuard. However, Medical Daily, the original publication has not been rated. I'm not telling you who to trust or what to believe. I'm just letting you know MSN.com republished this and they're putting their credibility on the line. But the story mentions that you could you could nebulize hydrogen peroxide, a disinfectant, and actually inhale it. Let me let me read a little bit for you. They say hydrogen peroxide appears to be another potential treatment for COVID-19. Health experts said the compound could help prevent the virus from spreading across the body and causing damage. They say hydrogen peroxide can be found in stores and the human body. The immune system uses the compound to boost the natural functions of cells and prevent viral infection. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, H2O2 may help fight the coronavirus, according to Dr. Thomas Levy. He said people can utilize hydrogen peroxide using it in its aerosolized form in a standard nebulizer. That's something you put on your face and you can inhale it. They say, Vaporized hydrogen peroxide has long been considered effective in removing viruses. Researchers in 1997 discovered that the compound could completely inactivate a range of exotic animal viruses. Effective hydrogen peroxide nebulization quite literally chops that off the snake, and the virus present elsewhere in the body can then readily be mopped up when the new virus influx has been terminated. The health experts recommends using a nebulizer. Okay, I don't know if this is legit. I'm not saying you should use a nebulizer. I don't know what's true or not. I can say that I do not believe Trump was referencing this, though many people are pointing it out. What I can say, uh, uh, additionally, if this story exists, that you can put some kind of disinfectant in the body, and I think it's fair to point out the question isn't stupid. And it was wrong of me to make that assumption. While I don't think the president knows what he's talking about, it is completely unfair, in my opinion, to claim that simply because he asked a question of his experts that he is somehow suggesting it or telling people to do it. Again, I hate doing a re-up on a segment I just did, but I have to, and it's like the best I can do. It's still, you know, I, did, I didn't want to just take my video down from earlier because I think my point stands that Donald Trump will come out and say something like, could we possibly put light in the body? And then everyone in the media says Donald Trump's a moron who wants to inject bleach. It's like, well, Maybe if you actually take a look at this, it's not as big a deal as you're making it out to be. They're exaggerating as they normally do. But the one thing they've consistently tried to do is put the blame on what stupid people do on Trump. In this story from the Washington Free Beacon, which I'm not going to get into the greatest like ultimate details, they, all, they, they basically just lay out how this man, Gary, and his wife, Wanda, these are, the, these, are, these are the two people who ate the fish tank cleaner, that the guy was smart, that he was an engineer, Wanda would berate him. She had previously attacked him. She wanted a divorce. And his friends did not believe or understand why he would ingest this chemical. They go on to say, a friend of, uh, of Gary's said that Wanda would often make a cocktail of vitamins for Gary. Those who knew Gary said he was in good spirits and seemed normal in the days before he died. One source said that Gary had recently started undergoing chelation therapy, a medical procedure that is typically used to treat people who have abnormally high levels of heavy metals in their blood, such as lead, mercury, or arsenic. It is, some, it is sometimes also used as a homeopathic remedy for heart disease, autism, and Alzheimer's disease. About a week before he passed away, a friend said Lenius told him that he would never remarry if something happened with him and Wanda. Gary loved Wanda. He trusted her to do the right thing for him. I doubt that he second-guessed when she gave him the chloroquine. 
So apparently what she did was she mixed this chemical into soda. They both drank it and he died. The insinuation we've seen from many more conservative individuals is that she may have, there there may have been malintent. I don't know for sure. It does seem this guy trusted her and he ate something dumb. If a dumb person does something dumb, it's not the president's fault. Okay. So the, the ultimate challenge, it really, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go for it. The double standard in media. Christina Cuomo, just the other day, posts list of out of touch coronavirus remedies. I think it's fair to say the president asked a question and people, many on the right, want to give him the benefit of the doubt. That's fair, I guess. I don't think you should always do that. The president doesn't always have to be right. I don't think Trump knew about uh, nebulized hydrogen peroxide. I think he was asking a question. It's not the stupidest question in the world. There's actually some merit to it. So I'll own up to that. I assumed it was really dumb and I insulted the president for it. So... It's actually a decent question considering the other articles that have emerged, especially the UV light thing. I didn't know what I was talking about. It's fair to say. Now, Christina Cuomo has put out a list of out of touch remedies. Is the media now going to pile on to her? Of course, page six is my respect if you want to call her out for putting out nonsense. But will all of these pundits on Twitter, all of these Donald Trump reply guys, BuzzFeed, Vox, etc., are they going to come out and point out that CNN's, you know, Chris Cuomo's wife, I think it's funny that Chris Cuomo's wife is also named Chris, but hey, it's a different thing. Are they both going to point out, you know, Trump and Cuomo? They're not going to do it. And I'm also not going to fall for the same mistake. So if you want to point out that Christina Cuomo is putting up silly, you know, uh, silly cures or whatever, body chargers, putting Clorox in bath water. Oh, wait, it's it's, okay. From the onion. I'm sorry. Uh, Don't load anything. Okay, let's read this. They say, even though her CNN anchor husband, Chris, the brother of New York, you know, Cuomo, was universally panned for his melodramatic exit from the COVID quarantine, it gets worse. Uh, Quote, when my sinus congestion was painful, I enlisted Dr. Roxana Namavar and pretty healthy from Pretty Healthy NYC, who also does vitamin drip at home at the Hamptons, she wrote. She shows up in her full hazmat outfit in 3M, you know, blah, blah, blah. I got magnesium, NAC, vitamin C with lysine, proline and B complex, folic acid, zinc, selenium, blah, blah, blah. In what reads like a piece from The Onion, Christina adds, both days I added a half cup of Clorox to my bathwater to combat the radiation and metals in my system, what, and oxygenate it. Adding a small amount of non-concentrated bleach to a bath is said by some to rid the skin of bacteria. However, doctors say the smell of bleach can trigger asthma and other breathing problems. You know what? I'm bowing out of this one. It sounds silly to me. But why are you dragging a vitamin drip? I don't know about that. We need, we need vital minerals or whatever. They go on to say that it's pseudoscience. She talks about using a body charger, which energy specialist Randy Oppitz suggests I brought from a friend. Okay, (laughs) I'm out. Listen, man, I'm going to, this this is why I often avoid these stories. People get mad at me. They say, why don't you rag on Trump? I get all these tweets saying, Tim, are you going to drag Trump over this? And you know what? I've done this several times. Trump will say something and I'll be like, okay, now that has to be insane. And I'll go ham on it. And then minutes later, all of a sudden I get inundated with all this information. And I'm like, well, I was wrong. So it's put me in a position where because the media and Democrats have cried, they've cried wolf so often. I can't, I can't even talk about this stuff. You know what, man? Look, some people have said they were expecting me to be balanced and drag Trump and the Democrats and the, the other foot never dropped. Listen, man, when The Intercept, which drags Trump all day and night, writes the mainstream media got 30 plus stories wrong and issue attractions, I can't just blindly walk into these stories where they're like, Trump did this. Because when I do, I end up with a segment earlier. Where I'm like, haha, Trump is so dumb. What a dumb question. And then I'm like, oh, these things actually exist. <laughs> okay. I don't think Trump is the smartest man in the world. I don't think you need to defend everything he does. I think doing so makes it seem like you're being dishonest. Certainly, you can criticize the guy for saying dumb things. In the context of bleach, he was talking about injections. Maybe you can call it stupid, but maybe there's something we just don't know. And you know what? If you're not a doctor, maybe we shouldn't be making assumptions. But more to the point, if you want to criticize Trump's statements on these things, it's fine. He was asking the expert. So calm down. When I read through the transcript, I was like, this is actually a lot of nothing. You know what's going to happen? Chris Cuomo and his wife will not be talked about. He, the, you know, all of these people, very few are actually calling out CNN for staging this whole COVID thing because of the, it, it's a double standard in media. So I'll own up to the fact that I jumped the gun. And I shouldn't do that. Not that I'm saying Trump is correct. I'm not saying these treatments are correct. I'm saying there's merit to asking questions about them. And, I'll, and I think that's a fair point. So I'll leave it there. 
Next segment will be coming up at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. It is my other channel, and I will see you all then.